Hi guys, so for my YouTube followers, um, there's no need for an introduction, you know me as Dizzy D 2021 on YouTube. Um, for others, um, my name is Danielle Cutsmore. Um, I'm also known as Danny or D. Um, the reason that I'm doing this video today, it's a little bit different to what I normally do on my channel, which is kind of like a vlog. Um, for people that are suffering with the condition that I have, which I'll go into in a bit. Um, the reason I'm doing this kind of video is because um, I've had a challenging week where um, there's a video that's gone viral um, and it's of um, a man called John Watt and he is challenging the Prime Minister. I'm gonna have to be careful about the terminology I use here. So what I'll say is this video is not about the condition I have, it's about um, the thing that we had in our arms a couple of years ago, um, which was supposed to be safe and effective. I just want to start by saying that I am not anti. I never have been. Um, anti people wouldn't have had it in the first place, okay? So that's not what this is about. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Um, I'm just somebody that's um, been affected and still affected by um, having had that in my arm a couple of years ago. I've now been ill for two years and nine months and um, on my channel, my channel is about recovery. So I just want to have a disclaimer here to the people that follow me on YouTube to say that this what caused it for me makes no difference on the recovery and the journey to recovery in the way that we understand it to be, okay? It's not, uh, it doesn't affect how we recover. It's always the same way. Um, but this is kind of like a, more about the thing we had on our arms, okay? Because that's what got me here in the first place. So, um, yeah. I've been ill for two years and nine months, not that I'm counting. Um, and I've had three different diagnoses, well, four different diagnoses actually. No, five, five. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about how this started. So the thing I put in my arm was in May, 2021. And um, it was four days after that, that I had my first spell of dizziness and it was spinning dizziness. Um, it lasted for about a minute. Um, I was with my friend who's a hairdresser and my other friend. We were having coffee and I just put it down to too much caffeine. So I ignored it. Um, and it went away. Um, and then a few days later, the same thing happened. I was with my partner. Again, I was in a coffee shop, obviously like coffee shops. Um, same thing happened and I just ignored it. And it happened again. And then on the fourth time it happened, I was with my friend and her mum and we were out in the middle of nowhere um, walking and um, it happened again. And it was, it was, it got to the point where I was like, wow, okay, something's really not right here. And I hadn't made the connection between the thing I put in my arm and that symptom at that stage anyway. Um, so I started to feel really unwell um, and I came home and I had a massive panic attack. Now I've never, never had a panic attack before in my life. Um, so I thought I was dying and um, my partner, uh, he knew that I was having a panic attack. A panic attack. He'd obviously had one before um, and he reassured me I was gonna be okay. But ever since that day, I have had chronic dizziness, um, a sensation of movement when I'm still. If you can hear a noise in the background, it's because I can't actually sit still. So I have to have a massager on me all times because my brain is saying that sitting down is dangerous. It's, it's crazy. So the diagnosis that I've been given is PPPD, which stands for Persistent Postural Perceptual Dizziness, MDDS, which is Mal de Debartmont syndrome, POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, 
and PTSD. Now, um, I do have a couple of those conditions and they are intertwined, but it all started four days after the thing I put in my arm. And I'm still, despite spending six grand, seven grand, um, I'm still no better. I'm, I've had a battery of different tests. Um, I've seen a neurologist, an EMT specialist, um, a audiologist, yeah, audio, audiologist, neurologist, ENT, um, psychiatrist, um, and been given a, just different diagnoses. Um, I've had a load of scans and um, I knew when I looked back at my diary, because I've made a diary of the kind of foods I was eating, um, when I was getting symptoms, um, this, that and the other. And um, I managed to trace it back to that exact time because I hadn't, I hadn't made the connection. Um, I had no issue in taking the thing that I put in my arm because I was told that it would help me a lot because I was at risk. Um, I'm a cancer survivor of 20 years. So actually the NHS saved my life. Um, so why wouldn't I trust this, you know? Um, I just want to show you a picture. It's a ridiculous picture, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, it's of me and my partner. He just got some new glasses. So I put his old glasses on and I took a picture and I just, it was for Facebook. And I just said, oh, this is just us making a spectacle of ourselves. This picture was taken. <laughs> Look how happy I am. That picture was taken after I came out of the thing that I put in my arm center, okay? Um, I'm saying all this because I'm worried about censorship and stuff, okay? Because people um, like to shut comments down and, you know, try and make out that it's not a problem when there clearly is. Um, anyway, so that happened. Um, I was fine and then I wasn't fine anymore and I'm still not fine. Um, I've pretty much been gaslighted by various different doctors because it's unfortunate that I lost my mum in January 2020, which is just before COVID. Um, and, but this hadn't happened until a year and a half later. Um, I then, whilst having these neurological symptoms, let's call it a functional neurological disorder because that's what it is. Um, I also lost my dad to cancer um, and I put in a claim to the um, government's payment scheme for people that are injured as a result of the things that they put in their arms. Um, and I've been waiting two years and three months for it and I got rejected on Friday, which coincides actually with the day that I saw a video um, that's gone viral. Um, from a guy called John Watt. Um, it's actually, it was on B, on GB News, which isn't a channel that I watch, to be honest. I don't really watch the news because I just can't deal with it. Um, but I saw this video and he was standing up for people like me and him um, to the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, in some sort of open forum, people's forum, um, saying, you know, why why has he had to set up a support group himself? Why, why are we being ignored? Why are we being shut down? Um, and all the rest of it. And I actually felt so excited, um, validated, hopeful, um, all a mixture of emotions, angry. Um, and when I saw him in this, I will link to the videos I'm mentioning here in the description. When I saw him, um, he was moving from side to side like this, as he was saying, Rishi, Rishi Sunak, blah, blah. he's moving from side to side like this. And I could see myself in him and I thought, because I can't sit or stand still, I have to move. And um, I showed my brother and he was like, I thought that as well. I wonder, I wonder if I, I'll have a look at him, who he is, and see if he's got the same as you. Um, and it turns out that he has. He had his thing in his arm in May 2021, same as me. Um, he was also uh, considered at risk because he'd had heart problems. Obviously, I was a cancer survivor, so we were invited a little bit earlier than the others. Um, I don't know if we had the same batch number, but we definitely had the same 
make, which was AZ. I'll just have to abbreviate it, um, which is a UK based one that they no longer use. Um, my understanding is it's, it's not of the MRNA, it's a viral vector one. So um, that's my understanding anyway. But um, I just thought, wow, okay. So my brother found this video of this guy um, being interviewed after the meeting with the Prime Minister. He was interviewed by a doctor called Dr John Campbell. Um, and I watched the sort of hour and 15 minutes of this interview. Um, I was just gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. Everything he was describing is everything that I've pretty much been struggling with. Um, it's, it's just identical. He's had a, a diagnosis of myocarditis, which I don't have, but then I didn't have prior health um, heart problems and he did. So myocarditis, I believe, is inflammation of the heart, I think. Um, but we've, the, 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 the diagnosis that I mentioned earlier, the three POTS, P-O-T-S, like um, um, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, PPPD, persistent postural perceptual dizziness, and MDDS, melded abutment syndrome, they are all vestibular disorders, meaning they're all dizziness related disorders. Um, and I've been diagnosed with all three of those. And he'd been diagnosed with POTS and PPPD, um, and then myocarditis. So we've both experienced a range of, of neurological symptoms. Um, now he seems to be improving slightly, although he's still wearing dark glasses. I have to wear dark glasses when it's really bright outside because I'm so sensitive to light. Um, I've experienced about 25 different symptoms in the last two years and nine months, and I just wanted to share them with you. Um, rocking on a boat when I stand. So I feel like I'm actually standing on a boat. And when I sit down, <laughs> um, I'm better when I'm in a car because of the passive motion. Um, I get vibrating body, like an anxiety reaction, um, pins and needles, um, spasms. So I'll, I'll suddenly you know, go into spasm. Um, I have hot flushes. I'm just reading a list here. I have, um, I've had shortness of breath. I have chest pain. I still have that. Um, sometimes it's just, just this intense, visceral, tightness and my heart's fine I've had an ECG there's nothing wrong with my heart at all nothing wrong with it um blurred vision which I still have light sensitivity which I still have um I have eye floaters as well so like black spots and just floaters in front of the eyes but it's it's pretty much all the time um tinnitus which I still have I've got it now as I'm talking to you um but I try to put it to the back of my mind um hearing loss which it will be suddenly, I'll lose hearing in one ear and then it will come back again. Uh, lightheadedness. Um, so it's almost like a feeling of low blood sugar um, or low blood pressure. Um, tachycardia, which means your, um, your heart rate goes up on standing consistently and it's like a regular heartbeat. Um, dissociation, so I feel like I've been out of my body. Depersonalization. Um, panic attacks, body jolts, a dropping sensation, which is horrible. Um, there's times where I've gone to bed and my brain suddenly thinks that I'm falling off of a high building. So then I get the, the thing in your stomach, you know, imagine you're on a roller coaster, it's that kind of thing, and I just feel like I'm, I'm dropping. Um, I feel movement when I lay down. Um, I've had eye twitching, burning tongue, um, my head feeling like a bowling ball where I've got out of bed and my head literally felt so heavy it was going to fall off. Um, palpitations, trouble staying asleep, nausea, um, night sweats, skin crawling where I feel like things are crawling across my chest. I can still get that quite often. Um, head pressure, eye strain, brain zaps which have jolted me awake, um, insomnia, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, you know, just like 25 different symptoms. Um, and I understand that this is, it doesn't really matter what what I call it. Um, I don't have POTS, I don't have straightforward POTS. I have um, had a, I haven't had a tilt table test, but I have had 
lying standing blood pressure taken and um, my heart rate doesn't go consistently above 30 beats per minute which is what would happen if I had straightforward POTS, but I do have a type of dysautonomia. So my heart rate does increase when I stand, it continues to go up, but not above 30 beats per minute. So just to be clear on that, okay? I'm not, I've kind of just shelved the POTS thing because there's so much going on and I've seen so many specialists. I don't want to then add cardiology into the mix when I know from an ECG that my heart is okay. Um, so there we are. Um, I went to Harley Street to a private audiologist. As I say, I've spent a lot of money. Um, he was very much of the opinion that he's seeing these kind of symptoms commonly, commonly presented in his clinic following um, the things that we put in our arms in 2021 and the virus, basically, both. Um, and that's documented. He put that in my clinic letter. At that point, I um, contacted the government and said, look, you know, what are you going to do? I'm still, I'm still ill. And this isn't even about money. It's I've lost the opportunity to hold my dad's hand in hospital when he was dying because I couldn't sit still. My partner had to go to his appointments with him instead of me. And while I was out in the car park outside Mount Vernon Hospital Cancer Unit, pacing, just pacing because I couldn't, I couldn't be still. While my partner was in the hospital with my dad in his final months. That's what I'm doing it for. So, um, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride, but, um, and a lot's gone on, obviously. But um, what's triggered it was the thing that I put in my arm. And the audiologist confirmed, said, that basically that thing I put in my arm created an immune response, which caused a crystal to dislodge into my from my ear into my horizontal ear canal that's what was causing the spinning and my reaction to that was to panic and that's what's kept this chronic that's that was his opinion on it um other people might have different opinion but as i say i'm not you know i i just i just took this thing you know, with good intentions and um here we are so seeing Seeing the video from um, GB News with, with John Watt, and I just want to say, John, um, I hope that you get to see this video. I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for standing up for us. Um, and I'm so sorry that you've been going through this too. And I'm glad that you're a bit better. Um, I'm not, unfortunately, but then I've had another life stressor come in. So, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Um, but this is my reality, guys. <coughs> so I've been talking too much with that water. One second. Cut to the air break. Anyway, I just want to say to my YouTube followers, again, it does not affect how we get better. We know how we have to get better. The brain has learned something and it can unlearn it. People can have a stroke and learn to walk again, talk again. It's the same principle that applies to this. I'm just doing this video because of this viral video that's been going around and it's, it is deeply affected me. And I've noticed how people are changing towards me because I really feel that I've been gaslighted by a lot of people because of my losing my parents, because of, um, I don't know, the virus itself, you know, people have been stressed. Um, so they're like, oh, it's anxiety and, you know, no, this is neurological, 100% neurological. Um, but I know what I need to do to get better. I know it's going to be a very, very long process because this is not, I've got to rewire my brain, basically. Um, and the brain has to be calm in order to do that. And I've, as we all have, we've got life stresses. So, um, but I want to thank you, John and um, Dr. John Campbell. I would love to um, speak to you if that's at all possible. Um, not as a patient, but just, you know, as a general chat, I'm pretty sure you're not taking on any, any more patients at the moment. You must be bombarded, but um, it's, yeah, it's it's all very interesting and uh, people have started to be a lot more supportive to me. Now somebody on the internet has come out and said, this is what I'm experiencing. And people are remember and thinking of me and thinking, oh my God, she's not 
joking. <laughs> She's not lying. This is a thing. So there we are. I just wanted to create some awareness of what's going on and, you know, have a think about it. If you know anybody that's suddenly going through some weird neurological stuff, A, get checked out, get medical clearance. But if the tests are all coming back normal, if, they're, if they have dizziness, send them my way. Um, it's Dizzy D 2021 on YouTube. I'm not doing this for money. I don't ask people to subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm not paid for adverts or anything like that. I'm only doing this as a vlog, both for myself and for the other people suffering to see how much progress I'm actually making. Because I have made progress in the two years and nine months, but there's been times I couldn't walk. I was bedridden. Um, I, I fell down the stairs. I fell down the stairs. Um, I got so lightheaded. Um, and it's been a real, really, really challenging time. Um, and I would like somebody to, from the government, to take some responsibility. Um, but, you know, and, and just support us, just in some way, shape or form. It shouldn't be down to individuals to set up support groups. You know, there are friends of mine that work for the NHS. Um, and they're saying, well, they're not going to do that because then that's just admitting liability in some way. Well, it shouldn't be. It, it, it's, you know, people need support. Um, in the same way they're supporting people with uh, in the long COVID clinics. So why can't this happen for us? Um, I do wonder, part of me thinks maybe um, it's something to do with the fact I had lymphoma. I don't know if, if um, having blood cancer in the past or having chemotherapy for blood cancer has somehow made my immune response a bit different to other people. I just really don't know. Um, but I just hope that um more research is done and i hope that we get some answers soon it is my opinion this is going to end up like the whole post office scandal it's probably going to take a long time and it's strengthening numbers and um yeah i just want to give a shout out to all the people that are suffering with any of the conditions i've mentioned you're not alone um and please check out the steady coach on youtube dr yoni arthur is amazing she is her approach to recovery is what's helping me recover, um, although it's slow. Um, I'll get there eventually, but it's going to take a long time. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. And to my YouTube followers, I'll see you next Sunday. Otherwise, um, take care, guys.